Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another awesome episode of Tasha's live interview. Hey. So, I'm so happy to have you all here with me today, uh, ready to watch and ready to have an amazing time. Thank you all for tuning in. Today we have another great guest with us. Hi. I love I love all the uh, messages early on here. Yay. Uh, we have a great guest with us today who I'm so excited to bring on. Um, someone who is very, very supportive of the uh, trans and gender non-conforming uh, communities. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and just bring her on and get started. So we are bringing on um, Aaron. Wrong person. I clicked the wrong one. They're in here, right? There we are. There we go. We are bringing on Eden from the Breast Form Store. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, Very well, thank excited you for, to be here. <laughs> yes. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to come and talk <laughs> with me. I know. I'm very excited to be here. So. Oh, awesome. Um, okay, can you do a quick introduction of who you are, what the Breast Form Store is, and kind of just talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So my name is Eden. I am the lead fitter here with the Breast Form Store. I have been here for a little over 10 and a half years now. Um, the Breast Form Store was started back in 1993. It started as a service primarily for post mastectomy women uh, mm -hmm. locally here in Vancouver in Canada. And slowly back in the early 90s, more and more cross dressers, trans women had heard of the service and started calling. So that's when our founder, Victor, went, Well, there's got to be more than just Vancouver. And I bet I can help these people. So he did some research and it started with checking out what was available at that time, which was a lot of fly by night, like catalog mail service things, mm -hmm. uh, some really sketchy stuff on the internet because it was just around the time where the internet was starting. And he went, well, we have experience. We know what we're talking about. Let's put this online. So that's yeah. where the breast worm store started. Uh, so from there, we've grown and it has transformed from post mastectomy to, n I'd say probably 90, 95% working with the transgender community, the gender non-conformity, non-conforming community, cross-dressers, drag queens, everyone who wants to express their gender, uh, even women who are looking to experiment with their own natural size. That's all of what we do. Uh, we do mm -hmm. still have that post mastectomy side, but it's very, very small. Um, and from there, we've designed our own products designed to fit to that assigned male at birth body so that it is a more natural, flattering look and things like that. So, yeah, we're, we're a little bit of everything. I love hearing that. And first off, I have to say thank you so much for all the proper terms. Um, that is a huge thing right there because I know... A lot of companies will say, yeah, we're inclusive, but then not use a lot of the terms. So the assigned male at birth, like just all that stuff is thank you for using that. Um, that is very, very wonderful to hear. Um, and I love the, what you guys are offering. And you saw this need in the community because you're exactly right. I mean, for someone who's just starting out in the gender nonconforming realm, I, like it, it is a little scary and it's a little weird to think about where am I going to, how am I going to fit in? How am I going to look real and uh, trying to find products that actually work? And I know for me, one of the first places I checked out was Amazon and I, the first couple things I got were no good. <laughs> Yes, and that is very much, and that's definitely, like, we're now in that age where Amazon is that marketplace. We understand it. It's the first place to go. Here we go. Let's, let's just buy something. 
Uh, whereas back 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago, your option was if you knew what you were looking for and you knew what a breast form was, mm -hmm. your option was to call one of these mastectomy boutiques and hope that you got someone understanding on the other side. 99% of the time you did because we're women, we understand what it's like to lose a breast, you need that breast to feel whole. Like it, most of the time it was a very welcoming experience, but it didn't mean it wasn't a scary one. Yeah. The challenge with that mastectomy route is they're designed for insurance purposes. So although, for example, our products are made for us by post mastectomy manufacturers, so they've got all that FDA clearance and everything like that, so that it's a really clean facility, it is extremely expensive to get that check mark from the US government, from Health Canada, mm -hmm. from um, the European Union to make it approved for post mastectomy use. So the exact same product is easily two or three times more expensive when working with one of those boutiques, which for someone who is, you know, just starting out, not totally sure what they want, if they're wanting to commit to 500, 600, 700, 800 dollars for a pair of breast forms, that's really scary. So we've mm -hmm. come so far and we've got so much farther to go, but it's so much nicer to not have those concerns and not to have that out of pocket expense on that first pair. Yes, your first pair might be $30 and it might be a waste of $30 because they were on Amazon and the quality is not that great but at least it's not 600. <laughs> yes, very true. Yes, I 100% agree with that because yeah, looking at those prices of the top quality ones, it, it is scary to think about, but what, when you're actually going to purchase one of the top quality ones, what are you getting that's better than what the ones Amazon can offer? So in the rural world of breast forms, there's really two types of silicone breast forms. There's your medical style prosthetic, and then there's your special effects prosthetic. So these are the two types. The majority of breast forms out there will be your medical style prosthetic, which is the liquid silicone in that polyurethane plastic skin. And that's the one that looks, looks real under clothing, um, bounces, squishes, feels real. If it is a trusted company that has that background in post mastectomy, that's when you get the science that goes into making it duplicate a breast as much as possible. Um, if mm -hmm. you're working with a not so reputable situation, you might have something that's close but doesn't have that scientific background. That's when you run into bra fitting challenges and things like that. But same sort of idea. You get the bounce, you get the movement, you get the feeling. The other side of it is your special effects prosthetics. And that's mm -hmm. like your movie prosthetics. So think a makeup artist taking time to craft something that looks really good on screen. That's the idea behind those. So they're usually like layers of silicone with a silicone skin on the outside. So it looks really good naked, but they tend to be firmer because they're not liquid inside. So you are paying in that situation for that fantastic blend to the skin, for it to match to your skin tone, to work good with makeup. So you've got that really great visual effect, but you're paying for the artist's skill at that point because they're made by mm -hmm. hand versus something that is made in an FDA approved medical factory. So that's okay. the big difference. And that's why, one set of forms is $30, $200, $300 to something that starts at $500. And I've seen them go up to thousands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, when I think of them, you have your, like, what I like to call pocket bra forms. Yes. The ones that just fit in, I, like, that I'm currently actually wearing, that just fit into a mastectomy bra. And there you go. It just fits. It looks great under skin. Then you have the ones that um, a lot of people are using, which are like the, I like to call them the neck ones, because it's like you put on a full chest. And yes. it creates this line about right here that is very hard for a lot of people. They either have to wear like a tight cho choker necklace to make the line disappear, or 
have to be very skilled in silicone makeup use. <laughs> yes. And you know what? They have their purpose. Definitely. If you're all about getting that visual va va voom cleavage, they mm -hmm. have their purpose for sure. I generally don't recommend those for girls who are looking to be full time, um, simply because they're not super practical. Uh, because when you're wearing something that is silicone with a neckline up to here, um, it is definitely like wearing a wetsuit in the sense that that silicone heats up to your body's temperature and it stays there. So it mm -hmm. is not the most comfortable if you're in Arizona or Texas or Louisiana or anywhere where it gets hotter than Canada. <laughs> and even then, I wouldn't want to wear it all day here. Um, but yeah. it is very much that sort of situation. But if it's for those once in a while with situations where you just really want to look good, you want to have that confidence. It's all about how the girls look. That's the purpose for those for sure. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, what about, so like, I, I know I'm basically, I'm using this whole first part as like education on breast forms. If you haven't figured that out yet, people who are watching, um, cause I feel like it is needed. Like I know for me, when I was first starting out and there was no education whatsoever for me. And so I was just guessing. So I wanted to make sure we provided this for people today. Yeah. Um, what about stick on ones? So, like the self adhesive. So the self adhesive ones, there are some breast forms out there. For example, ours, we call them the gold seal. Um, that can be attached to be worn braless. And then there are breast forms out there that are, self-adhering or with a built-in adhesive some of them are that tradi traditional um, medical style prosthetic and we'll talk about those in a second and others are like your special effects prosthetic which have to be attached to the skin because that's the whole idea so there are two kind of schools of thought the medical style prosthetics that have that built-in adhesive so that's something that quite often you'll see with amalux um, american breast care has a couple of them as well um, Amona is another big brand. Excel has a couple. Those are generally meant for a post mastectomy woman who doesn't want to wear a um, wear a regular mastectomy bra. That was the original okay. intention of that adhesive. So it's there to hold it close to your skin so that you get the sensation, but it's not strong enough to go braless. And a lot of us mm -hmm. girls, we want to go braless because you want to wear that strapless top or whatever. So it is one of those things that it's a great option, but I would say it's between the two, there are other options to get that braless look that are a lot easier. Honestly, my biggest thing is make sure that you're looking for what's best for you. Work with a trained fitter who understands your body type and what your goal is, because we're always attracted to the new, the shiny, the, the better feature my car has Bluetooth. I don't need Bluetooth, but I want Bluetooth because it's a feature, right? Yeah. Well, we want the self-adhering breast forms because it's a feature, but do I actually need it? Maybe, maybe not. So that's when it comes down to figuring out what your body is, what was going to meet your goals, because it might be something that attaches in a different way, like double-sided tape or the Hollister adhesive is a better way to go for your specific needs. Okay. Okay, that's, that's great information. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, because I know like I have a, so I have my pocket um, ones that I have, and then I have a pair that are self adhesive that I like to wear when I'm deciding like, because I obviously I can't wear them without like without a bra. But it's when I'm like, you know what, I want to wear a bralette or something that's a lot lighter and more comfortable, then it's exactly. like, okay, I can wear that because a pocket, a pocket breast would not fit like it would just fall right out of the first time you bent over especially and that's when it is a good option is you want that little bit of extra security but you're still going to support it in some way so it might be one of those tank tops that has a shelf bra built in it might be a bralette that's holding it close to the body but isn't doing all the work the, those mm -hmm. are definitely things where that is a huge benefit to go out and out braless, I always recommend using something that is a medical grade adhesive, like the double sided tape method, the Hollister adhesive, where you get that extreme bond. 
Uh, but mm -hmm. I will always say double check your breast form first. It's not all breast forms will work with those two methods. So that's when it comes down to double checking what you have and what is going to work best for you as well. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Very good to know. Awesome. Um, if anyone who is watching has any questions and would like to ask um, Eden, please uh, go down to the question bar and type it in. Do not type it in in the comments because it disappears on me and I will not be able to see it. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask Eden about breast forms, fitting, anything like that, this is the time to do it. So like, let's get it done. <laughs> <laughs> While I got you here, right? Yeah. Okay. So Eden, while we're waiting on people to ask any questions, I want to ask you this. How in the hell did you get into this line of work? Craigslist. <laughs> really? I'm, I'm not even joking. So I'm formally trained as a graphic designer. And okay. I actually previously worked in a sexual health and wellness company. And before that, I worked for wig stores. So very similar, but different. Um, yes. So very much about privacy, very much about appearance, how you feel, how good you feel inside and out. Uh, so that was my background. And when I was looking for a new position, there was this job on Craigslist and it was actually described as feminine hygiene. So when I applied, I thought I was applying for a tampon manufacturer. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, and then when I went through the interviewing process and found out a little bit more about the company, I'm like, this is perfect. I get to talk about wigs and makeup and lingerie and boobs all day. This could not be better. <laughs> so That's a dream job right there. Right, right. I get to talk about all the girly things all I want. So it's great. Oh, awesome. That's hilarious. Craigslist position. Wow. Craigslist. Yes. That, wow. That is, that is gold. Thank you for that. That is so good. Wow. Um, okay. So like if you are, let's say you are recommending something for me. So I am a gender fluid model who is looking for something that's not overly like not breaking the bank, but something that's better than your typical Amazon like uh, breast form. What would be something on your site that you would probably push me towards? So I always start with getting your physical measurements. And the reason why is because bra size is so, so, so critical. Uh, 38B. And it's even more critical for other reasons. So when we are talking about women who have developed the breast tissue naturally, 99.9% uh, .9 of them, that's probably a little bit high, 95% of them are wearing the wrong size bra. So yeah. if you have a woman in your life at, that you know, a sister, mother, friend, girlfriend, wife, whatever, and she goes, oh, the best part of my day is taking off my bra. Can't wait to take it off her bra doesn't fit. Yep. <laughs> Simple as that. Whereas on the other side of things, when we're working with an assigned male at birth body, the standard bra fitting rules don't apply because bra fitting is like an art. It's not a science. There's no rhyme or reason or logic to anything, just like it is with all women's clothing. Um, so you actually have to add several inches to your under bust measurement to figure out what your bra band is because it's not actually based on your under bust measurement. So mm -hmm. on someone who has developed breast tissue naturally, it's actually taken from the armpit. But when we're working with someone who doesn't have developed breast tissue, the measurement of the armpit and at the under bust is the exact same measurement, which mm -hmm. means you don't get that plus four inches, plus five inches, plus two inches, plus three inches, whatever that may be, to figure out what the true bra band size is. So I always start with measurements to figure out what that is first so that we can then figure out proportionately what looks best, but also we can figure out how much pec muscle, how much breast tissue we're working with naturally to make sure that when you put that breast form on and it's against the skin, it's against the skin. And it's not like a book on a basketball where the edges are peeling away or it's so concave that it just kind of collapses. So yeah. Those are the places I start. 
generally speaking, it comes down to what you're wanting to wear. So is it something that you want to have the versatility of going braless? Is it something that you want to look good naked? Is it about feeling good naked? Those are the different things that I ask. 99% of the time, I will direct someone to a product like the Gold Seal Breast Forms that are something that can be worn in a pocket bra, can be worn in a regular bra, or could be attached to go braless. They're significantly cheaper than those $500, $600 ones that are all about looking good naked. You're looking at closer to that $200 price point where you're getting something that's made in the U.S., that has a manufacturer's warranty, that's designed for that assigned male at birth body, and works with bras. That's key. And that's normally where I lean people to. Okay. Awesome. That's a great, that's a great recommendation right there. Thank you so much. Cause I know that there are those people who necessarily like, especially starting out, they don't want to talk to someone. They are too shy. They're too nervous. They're too afraid of being judged to actually reach out and talk to someone and get that help that you just gave to me. And so hearing that is at least a good start for someone to be like, okay, Here's a starting point, I guess. And then we can work from there. And that's exactly it. And honestly, with what we do with the Breastworm store, we're all about education because we do have that medical background. So we're not about selling at all. That's not what the build- business was built around. Our business is built around making sure that you feel comfortable and you're getting the right product. So if it is something oh. that you have in mind that we don't offer, we will send you to a retailer that we know has it that will treat you with respect. So it is more important for us to make sure that you are getting exactly what you want and exactly what you need, whether or not it comes from us. Awesome. Wow. (laughs) How business should be done, right? (laughs) One would hope that everyone could follow this example, right? Of just yeah. making sure that the person on the other side is being treated with respect and is getting what they want. Yeah, that's- I so agree. Too often it's not what happens, but that's great to hear that you guys do that and you all support that. And I, I just, the, the fact, what's still so astounding to me is the fact of how inclusive and how um, friendly you are and supportive you guys are towards assigned male at birth um, people when it comes to finding something that truly fits and find something that helps us feel right you know like just feel good within our own skin feel good about who we are and how we look and all that stuff i mean that's huge so it definitely is yeah um so (sighs) I had the question and then it lost my <laughs> train of thought. Oh my goodness. How embarrassing. I was like, it was like right here and then gone. Oh. Had somewhere else to be. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, so there was another one that, oh my gosh, I am so embarrassed. I keep forgetting questions. Okay, so how about I take us in a totally different route? (laughs) Sounds good. You take the lead because I'm embarrassing myself. (laughs) No worries. So uh, with the Rest Warm store, because we are dedicated to our trans communities, our non-binary communities, our cross-dressing communities, uh, everyone who is looking for that gender expression, there is a lot of things that we do behind the scenes that are part of the breast form and not a part of the breast form store. So okay. uh, one of the ones that we do that is incredibly, 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 incredibly important that everyone should know about end of sentence. Everyone should be aware of this resource is trans pulse, which was formerly known as Laura's playground many, many moons ago. And it is a crisis and suicide prevention website exclusively dedicated to our communities. So they are trained professionals that are volunteering their time to be crisis support 
agents. They are here to talk to you when you need that set advice. There's forums. There's all these wonderful things. And they are there specifically for transgender women, cross-dressers, non-binary, gender expression, two-spirit, anyone who needs that additional bit of comfort, they're there. Mm -hmm. Most of them have very similar life experiences. Some of them are partners that are there to help and to be that sounding board and to talk to you. That is why it's such an important resource. Um, we're involved only in the sense that we pay for their hosting. So we pay to keep the servers up. That is our job to make wow. sure they're up, they're safe, they're secure. And we've been doing that for probably, I want to say about eight years now. Wow. So, Awesome. That, and that is so, so critical. Uh, before Trans Pulse was rebranded, they were Laura's Playground, and I think they started in 1996. Wow. Yes. Well, that's something that we will let. I uh, thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. I had no idea the Breast Form Store was that involved with that. That's so awesome. Yes. Um, yes, because Trans Pulse is a huge resource and a great resource. Um, and I mean, there are there are other ones, but like I one that always comes to mind is the Trevor project and stuff like that. But what's so great about trans resources, exactly what you said, it's dedicated to the trans umbrella within LGBT um, yes. and really like really focusing on how to overcome issues, how to battle through things with people who have been there before and understand what the trans experience is truly like, um, which is awesome because I, it is such a unique and very different experience from anything else within the LGBTQ community. It's the, the T is so uniquely different because for a lot of people, it's changing who they were in people's eyes to become something completely different in people's eyes and therefore it's harder to fit in it's easier to pick out and it's easier to hate against and it's yeah it's so great I'm so grateful you guys are so involved with them because that's awesome and it's also very difficult like I love Trevor Project it is a great great resource but the challenge is also when you're talking sexuality to gender identity they're two very different things there are people who cross both and there are people who don't cross. But it's very, very difficult because when we're under this big happy rainbow umbrella, it's not the same paths that we all walk. There are paths where they intersect, but they are different. And that's why Trans Pulse is such a critical resource. And it's one that I will always recommend again and again and again, because it is Again, that, that knowledge, that understanding, that is so specific to our communities. Yes. Oh, preach it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That is awesome. Like I said, I had no idea you guys were that involved. I thought, like, I was aware of TransPulse before, um, but never, never knew you guys were associated with them and that you guys did that uh, to keep that uh, organization up and running. That's mm. So we are there specifically in terms of supporting the community. Um, Transpulse has no advertising or anything like that on it. And we have instructed it to be that way for the exact reason that it is crisis support. Uh, we have no involvement beyond just paying for the hosting and making sure that they have everything they need to operate. Um, there's like a small little text saying, you know, hosting is paid for by um, the breast mm -hmm. store and q and -E is the server provider who is also a trans um, led organization as well so that is where we're involved but we do try and keep it so that it's a resource not something that you have to feel uncomfortable that you're going to go there and be sold to because that's the last yeah. thing you want in a crisis moment you want to feel secure and that's the challenge that you do find with a lot of uh, mental health resources and things like that where you go and they're trying to make ends meet as well and there's banner ads all down the side and it's it loses some of that personal personal touch so agreed we, we're there more to support in the background and just make sure that they can focus on helping the community as best as possible 
which is exactly that's so great i mean exactly for what you just talked about because like i know when i had to reach out to national suicide hotline at one point and i was on the website and saw all the advertisements and all that it was a little bit of a turn like it was a little bit of a turn away it was like you gotta be kidding me i have to go through all these i have to watch an ad like i'm trying to talk to someone like but yeah yeah, and I, I mean, we we completely understand it. We completely understand why ads are there; they're needed. But it's it's great that you guys do that for Transpulse so that they can be that nice, safe, secure, and open organization for members of our transgender community. And that is so so key, so so yes. key. Awesome. Okay, so that will definitely be in the bio down below. I will post a link to Transpulse and everything. So make sure you go down um, after you finish watching, listening, whatever you're doing with this episode um, and go ahead and check them out. Maybe bookmark it in case you ever need it for yourself um, or you want to recommend it to people in your community. I know I'll post a story about them too, because that's just so awesome. But yeah, um, thank you for that. That is awesome. It's such add- an incredible resource. And there's there are many out there for our community as well. It's just that is the one that I've, I've had personal experience with. I've sent my personal friends to as well when they've needed that little bit of extra that I know going to Transpulse, you will be taken care of. And that means so much more. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. Because I know when I recommend people... I, it is. It's so. It's so good to be to know when you recommend someone to go somewhere that you, they're going to actually get the help they need. They're exactly. going to be listened to. They're going to be understood, rather than just saying, "Oh well, here's something I found on Google." So I hope it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, what other um, resources, partnerships, anything else that the uh, Breastform Store does to help promote the community? So, we have partnered with a couple of other websites. So, so talk in early 90s again. Um, there was a physical print magazine that moved online in 2004, I want to say, called TG Forum. Um, and it was actually a print magazine owned by a um, a trans, uh, not a trans woman, she was a crossdresser, um, Joanne Roberts. And it was mm-hmm. this wonderful print magazine that had all of these different things from fashion advice for, again, that assigned male at birth body um, to, you know, safe places to go to. It was a great resource before internet was in everybody's homes and everybody's hands and things like that. They moved it online um, and shortly and actually a lovely woman named Angela runs it now um they had had challenges as Joanne started to get really sick near the end of her life so at that time we we were an advertiser at that point at that time we stepped up to the bar and we purchased the website and let Angela keep running it so Angela Um. is is paid to run TG Forum Um, And it's her baby. We're just there for tech support and just to keep the show moving. So that's another place where we do try and keep all of the resources that we know are out there that have been there for so long. We do our best to make sure all of that stays around for the newer generations that are coming along, for those who are going back to old memories and all of those Mm -hmm. things as well. Um, there's lots of stuff as old styles come back new again that are all re-relevant all over uh, that all of a sudden when we start talking shoulder pads and ruching up here we can talk about it all over again (laughs) so there's definitely those resources that we're trying to preserve as well that's awesome oh my goodness okay so say it's so basically Breastform store is in the business of helping out the um, trans trans women and cross dressers and non gender non conforming and women who have um, lost breast tissue, but also in the business of saving other businesses to like ha- make sure that things stay around and as many resources stay around as possible, which is 
incredible. No, goal, I, nobody else does this. Yes, our goal is all about being dedicated to the community. That is what we're here for, is we are dedicated to our communities that we work with. So that is so, so key. We're involved with so many different websites and different forums and things like that. But our, our goal is to always make sure that the community has safe places to go to and feels safe there. So, yeah. and that, again, that all comes down to we're not here to sell. We're here to give the best information that we can. We're here to make sure everyone feels safe and has access to what, we, what they need. And a great trend that we've seen over the last couple of years is we're seeing more and more organizations spring up around North America, around Europe, around Canada, the U.S., where there are companies, no, they're not companies, they're nonprofits that are dedicated to our communities, especially for those who can't afford those gender, um, gender expression items where mm -hmm. it gives you that confidence. So we work with a lot of them. There's so many to name. We work with Mission, oh, yeah. um, Mission Transition. We regularly work with universities where we provide products to them, at, either at a very, very, very low cost or free so that they can give it to those that they are serving and providing to make sure that those who are the most at risk get what they need. That's beautiful. <laughs> so all about definitely making sure that we are here for the community through and through. That's so beautiful. And it's so awesome because a lot of companies look to make a quick buck uh, off of this community. And they look at this and yeah. they, they think they see, okay, it's a cat right now. It's a, it, it's a growing community. A lot more people are coming out and it's a quick way of making a buck. It, we don't necessarily need to support the community. We can just get money out of out of them, and that's it. And but yet, you guys are here saying like it's not about that. It's about building this community, giving them the support they need, and really helping to grow what what's needed. And oh, I would say it's not necessarily that it's a growing community. It's that we're talking more about it. Because mm -hmm. there have been statistics issued where suggested that one in every two men have experienced cross-dressing at least once in their life. Just specifically men who um, choose to identify as a man have tried it. They've experimented with it. They put on a dress. They put on a skirt. They tried something. Might have been a Halloween costume might have been something a little bit more serious where they went okay i get it or mm -hmm. something to that extent it's just not something that was talked about 10 years ago 20 years ago it was definitely something we swept under the rug a lot more as a society compared to now where millennials gen z we've had access to this information as young people growing up with the internet where all of a sudden these things that weren't talked about were accessible and all of a sudden you can find an entire community that you had to be really really brave to find before the internet yeah so oh I, I would say it's not necessarily that there's more of us there's just the ability to communicate so much easier now with the internet and i will definitely agree with that it is definitely something that, you know, there are those, there, there have always been those companies that are here to make a buck and could care less about you. There have been so many companies that take your money and run and never give you the product, things like that, that we fight every day to make sure, again, our community is taken care of. Yes. Oh. Very true. And I do like what you said there about it's not necessarily a growing community. It's a community that is becoming more visible. Yes. It is a community that the the growth comes from people just allowing, like finally being able to speak out and speak up and say, this is who I am. Um, and that is accepted and it's understood and it's valid. And that's, that's yes. the big thing. So, no, that is great. Okay. All right, 
not to like push anybody else to some other companies, but what are some other places that you know that take a similar mindset or philosophy to what you all do with helping the community and helping to promote the community? So there are a couple of companies that I do recommend because I, I have worked with them personally as, as a, I guess, representative, as a fitter with the breast form store. Um, I really like Glamour Boutique in New Jersey. Um, so that is run by a man named David. He used to be part of uh, Cheeky Fashion's Glamour Boutique. There was one in Maine. Um, unfortunately, John, who used to run it, has passed away. Um, so that side has closed down, but Glamour Boutique, same idea, same trust to the community. Um, N Femme Style, formerly Suddenly Femme, they yep. are definitely your fashion place to go in terms of products that are, again, designed for that assigned male at birth um, and specifically designed to feminize the body. They are definitely a great resource for that. Um, pro Crossdresser formerly Dress Tech, is based in California. Um, they started with primarily doing silicone hip pads, and they've definitely done lots of tutorial videos and makeup and first world experiences and things like that. They are more targeting the cross-dressing community specifically rather than trans women, as it is run by um, a a cross-dressing individual. Uh, so that does change it a little bit depending on what you're looking for. But it is definitely, okay. it's an excellent resource. Um, there's tons of information there. Um, Diane and Judy can definitely help as well. They're the two women that run it. So definitely really good resources, depending again, where you're looking for, what your comfort zone is, what what you need at the end of the day. Perfect. I'll say on them. I absolutely love them. I did an interview with them a couple months ago. So yeah, I was glad to hear you say that because they are a wonderful resource. Not to mention their fashion is completely awesome and all their models are trans women, uh, which is I, me personally as a model. I love, I love that. So um, they, they've definitely come a long way because I remember yeah. when I started with the breast form store, they had the same struggles that we did of, finding trans models to work with was a real challenge. And sometimes you were stuck with the photos provided by your manufacturer because it was the only thing you could use until yeah. you did something about it. Um, but they've, they've come a long way. Their photography is beautiful. The quality of their garments is spectacular. I'm happy to give a shout out to them because I do know that the tailoring that they do to the clothing specifically really is quite exceptional. Yes. And then- And I will as well. And then um, to the other side of the world, uh, there is special trade in Germany. Uh, they okay. are German language primary. Um, so they are a little bit of a different situation because Europe is a little bit different than here in North America. So they've got like a full makeup transformation studio, a big like coffee lounge area and everything. They're quite a cool company as well. That's cool. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that because... We do have quite a few people over in Europe that listen and, and watch um, and partake mm -hmm. in these. So that's good to know. Um, and I know there's plenty and plenty more in Europe as well. But I'm glad to hear you say that one in Germany in particular. That's really yeah. cool. And Thanks. that is definitely one of those things that like this community and the various communities that make up our whole gender expression community is not just localize it is not just an american thing it's not a canadian thing it's not a british thing it's not a japanese thing it's not a german thing it is global and the fact that as the breast form store we have literally locations around the globe speaks to that so yes. we have um, a best friend team in japan that runs our japanese office we have a husband and wife team um, in australia that runs oceania uh, we have uh, we're actually just launching our German office right now, which is a father-son team. And then our UK office is actually a husband and trans daughter um, that run for our UK and other English-speaking European languages. So Love it. Right there, just one company has that global footprint. 
to prove that you are not alone. It is not just you. It is not just your country. Like, it's not just an American thing, Canadian thing, European thing. It is global. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you for saying that because you're, you're so right. This is, it is, it is not just a Western philosophy kind of thing of like, oh, well, we can just be who we want to be. No, it, it, it is. It is a human thing to want to be who you are, to want 100%. to express yourself as you are. There's a perfectly natural human emotion and feeling that is completely valid. You can express yourself as you see yourself. That is perfectly okay. And nobody can tell you you're wrong. So yeah. not only is it okay, okay. <laughs> do it. Be yes. you. At the end of the day, be you. Whatever that is, whatever makes you feel the most comfortable, the most beautiful, the most confident, be that. Yes. I mean, we tell, we tell um, women all the time, like the whole big push now is to be, be themselves, feel comfortable within your own skin. Uh, be proud of who you are, which is a great movement. It is such a great movement to say, be comfortable in who you are, no matter how skinny, no matter how many curves you have. It doesn't matter. Like, be comfortable with who you are. That same message is now being preached to just humanity in general as saying, yes. look, we don't need to confide ourselves to just simple traditional roles. Men, you are allowed to be some. You are allowed to be something different than the macho manly man. Women, you are allowed to be something different than the feminine side piece. You, you are allowed to be who you are, and it is just amazing to be that. And it is one of those things that, like gender expression, whether you're a tomboyish girl or a super feminine girl or a little bit more on the feminine on the male side to be really masculine whatever makes you happy at that moment is the right answer so yes. and if you're tomboy one day and you're super girly the other day great if you're fluid in the morning afternoon awesome whatever works best for you in that moment that's the way to be yes completely and i love this comment that um so this last person just put that they are relieved to know that if they ever move to another country, they are, they can get the supplies that they need. Yes. Yes. Because we all know paying for international shipping is a bitch. Um, so yes. yes, that is, that is awesome to hear that. I mean, obviously you're, there's still, it's not every country that you're in, um, unfortunately, but it is still accessible. You have Europe you, you are in, you have Britain that you're in. You have an Asian, well, an Asian market and an Australian market that you're in, as well as the Americas. So, yeah, that's yes. great for that person just to be, a, you're able to get the supplies that you need to be who you are. And for the Breast Form store, we have literally shipped to probably every country on the globe. Uh, so the Middle East, India, China, uh, Russia, Eastern Europe, South America, all over South America, Latin America, like we have literally shipped it to probably everywhere. So it is by no means hey. something that you have to be worried about. And that is awesome. this is what we do, we also know all the steps to make sure that things are discreet when it comes to customs, things like that. I know that's always a concern when it comes to international packages is what is it going to say on the outside of the box and what happens if the customs agent looks at it. Um, but that is what we're here for. And that's what our expertise is, is to give you that peace of mind. It is so funny that you said that. Um, so I'm going to give you a story. So last year for Christmas, um, my wife and I decided to travel to uh, England. And we stayed in London and all this stuff. And so I, I was out at this point. And so I'm like, well, I'm not just going to be male the entire time. I'm going to be myself. So I brought my supplies, my um, breast forms to come in. And um, going to Britain was no problem. There was no issue whatsoever. Nothing. It was when I came back, um, back into the States, that we went through customs at New York. And... Um, the agent like they scan my bag and they're like flag it right away 
because I, I was I went through mail because I was, my passport was mail. So I was like, uh, I'm just going to be safe. And they flag out. They flag it. They open up my bag. And the guy holds up the breastbone and says, what the hell is this? <laughs> and I was just like, what do you think it is? He's like, it looks like a boob. I'm like, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you got it right. It's a boob. He's just like, you can't have these. I'm like, yes, I can. There's nothing wrong with this. He like pulled over some woman. And she's like, oh yeah, that's fine. Doctors, doctors carry those all the time. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm a doctor. <laughs> you know what? It is one of those things that, like, silicone breast worms specifically can be a little unusual going through TSA simply because it's a gel product. So mm -hmm. if you're really concerned. Get a set of foam forms that are like 40 bucks and travel with those because that way you have that peace of mind. It's like traveling with a pillow. <laughs> so, but it's, it's honestly, it's the gel consistency that can cause a red flag, but it is something that is perfectly legal, perfectly safe to fly with. Not an issue. Ask TSA on Instagram. They're a great account to follow. If you're not following them already, <laughs> they have some great, great stories, lots of advice there. Um, but in terms of customs agents, man, I have some stories. So mm. we're a Canadian company and what it is, is we actually, because we're dealing with medical devices, we're dealing with breast prosthetics and things like that. We have special clearance during COVID and everything like that. So what happens is twice a week, our shipper drives across the border with products to drop them off at the post office. So we have the special clearance with customs. We ship out of Point Roberts, which is this tiny little border town, not actually connected to the rest of Washington state. And they know us really, really well. Um, what this then becomes is for the new guys who come to Point Roberts, the new border agents who don't know us, well, it's like, go inspect their boxes. Tell me what you think. <laughs> so it is a very entertaining thing. I've done the border crossings before and I've had that new guy who went, is this what I think it is? Is this a vagina? Yes, it is. <laughs> so it, yes, it, it is. is very much something that, you know what, as long as you have a good sense of humor, they really understand it because they know it. Um, but it is very much like just... A, they know what they're doing. They just have to ask the questions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, they have to ask the questions cause they, but yeah, most of the time they know it. I did will say I did have one very, very rude agent. So like I was going through TSA. I don't think this was my London trip. I think this was some other time, but um, I had a bralette on. I didn't have forms on. I just had a bralette on and he, I got flagged for extra check. And he was like patting me down and he's like, what is this you have under your shirt? I'm like, a bra? And he's like snapping it and all this stuff. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, men don't wear this stuff. And I said, good thing I'm not a man. <laughs> it is very much like you will always have the bad eggs. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I recently went through TSA. Uh, well, not recently. It was in 2018. I went through TSA and I was told that my deodorant was a liquid and I had to go back. So, yep. Yep, I I argued that one and I was sent back and I had to check my bag because my deodorant was a liquid. So sometimes there are just those TSA agents that need need a coffee break because they're really <laughs> overworked. Um, yeah. So I I mean the world. It's a good way of saying it. But definitely, it is one of those things that technically they are fully trained. They are fully trained in body prosthetics and things like that. Um, it just means that maybe the your agent that you had was having a bad day. So. Yes. I say, so big takeaway here, especially if you're flying out of North America or flying into North America and you're worried about like, well, I'm assigned male at birth and my passport might be that way you can fly like you can fly as yourself. It, it, there's nothing illegal about that. Nope. They cannot put up a fight about it because there's nothing wrong with, with it. Now I can't say the same for some other countries because this is wrong in some other countries, apparently, 
But um, for the most part, <laughs> yeah. Um, but for traveling to some of your safer um, countries around the globe, you can fly like this. You can travel like this. and It's completely fine. And if you're so. ever not sure about what you can bring, check the resources. Do a Google. Go to something like TSA that literally is about security, and they'll tell you straight off the bat, perfectly okay to fly with. So, mm -hmm. and then you at least have that knowledge so that you feel better and you feel safer. Um, it is definitely one of those things that it may or may not, if it's silicone, may or may not be a red flag because of that gel consistency, but it is perfectly safe to do so. Um, it is one of those things that, you know what? Women who go through breast cancer are way more likely to get flagged. Um, generally speaking, because chemotherapy can leave traces in the body through the radiation, and you're way more likely to sense off a, set off a sensor for that, which is just as horrifying. So it's yeah. one of those things that just make sure that you're armed, you're comfortable, keep a good attitude, and that'll be a much smoother transition. Yes. Yeah, it's all about having that positive mind, mindset and knowing you're not doing anything wrong. But and beyond that, don't, don't get combative. <laughs> and beyond that, sometimes you're just the unlucky one in the draw. It's just a random check. I've definitely gone through the full pat down search because I shouldn't say this, but I was wearing the wrong size bra and it didn't fit me. And I had safety pinned it to close properly. I forgot I had a safety pin in my bra and it was a red flag that I had something metal on me. Totally didn't even think about it. So it is. Oh my goodness. Things. Sometimes it's just a red flag. Another time I got red flag, got the full pat down because I had a paper clip in my hand and I, not in my hand, in my pocket. And I totally forgot about it. So there are lots of little things that have nothing to do with how you're presenting. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, unfortunately, we have hit the hour mark. I know we just talk and talk and talk forever and ever, can't we? And there's so much more to talk about. <laughs> there really <I> is. <laughs> um, but I, I will say we have to wrap it up. So I will first want to thank you so much for coming on here and talking about the products you all offer, the mission behind um, the Breastworm Store, and then just getting onto more topics about the community and promoting safety and mindfulness and all that awesome stuff so thank you so much for coming and joining me today thank you so much for having me it was so fun yes awesome um everyone please make sure you have a wonderful day uh, and if you're ever looking for breast form products or uh, just products to help you feel like yourself please go check out the breast form store if they don't have it they're going to point you in the right direction they're going to be there for you so please make sure you go give, get, check out their stuff and see if they've got something that's actually going to work for you. Um, and thank you so much for joining. if you're not sure or have a question, ask it. We have yes. we dedicated to this community. We have been here for almost 30 years uh, doing nothing but this. This is our specialty. We are here to help. So even if you're just like, I don't know what my bra size is, where should I go to get fitted? Does it really matter? What wig should I get? Ask the question. We are here to help. At the end of the day, yes. we are here to help. And that's what we're here for. Yay. Awesome. Thank you for saying that. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, I will be looking forward to my next conversation with you, Eden. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. All right, everyone. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>